The sort of questions that you might have asked and perhaps should ask in a free country are these. You might have asked, I wonder why the usual suspects cry consensus when it is so clear in the history of science that consensus is not the way science is done. Why does official climate science still pretend the Middle Ages were not warmer than the present? when the fabricators of the 2001 UN report's purported abolition of the medieval warm period are now under criminal investigation for defrauding taxpayers by tampering with data and results. The medieval warm period Moncton is referring to was between 950 and 1250 AD and is indeed a reference to a warm period in our planet's history. However, our current understanding is this wasn't a global phenomenon. It was predominantly in the northern hemisphere and even though this warming was most pronounced in the Northern Hemisphere, there were also places in the Northern Hemisphere that were significantly colder than today. We know this because of the work done by, for example, Michael Mann, who used more than 1,000 tree ring, ice core, coral, sediment, and several other temperature proxy records to create a global temperature record spanning 1,000 years. This record spans both hemispheres, and the temperature graph very clearly shows that globally it wasn't warmer than today. Compared to today's temperature records, in the red, it's quite clear that it is now much warmer than during the medieval warm period. This is the graph that is known as the hockey stick graph, and has been under heavy fire by people like Moncton who say it's flawed. Problem is, there is now a team of hockey stick graphs all telling the same story, and confirming the groundbreaking work Michael Mann did with his original research. Now the abolishment Moncton is referring to is that in early reports this warm period was shown as a global warm period, a reflection of our then current understanding in science and available temperature reconstructions. When the reconstruction of man became available it showed this wasn't a global phenomenon, and the 2001 IPC report just reflected this new scientific knowledge. There is also a second claim made by Moncton, which is the following. When the fabricators of the 2001 UN report's purported abolition of the medieval warm period are now under criminal investigation for defrauding taxpayers by tampering with data and results. What he's implying is that these scientists are being investigated by a law enforcement agency for some scientific misconduct and subsequent fraud. But I hadn't heard of anything like this. So I asked Moncton what he was referring to. Before I start with his answer, remember this date. The 19th of July 2011. This was when the debate was held. You will see why this is important in a moment. And this is what Moncton said to me. The Attorney General of the State of Virginia announced some time ago that he was investigating the role of the University of Virginia and of at least one scientist there, whom he named under the Fraud Against Taxpayer Act of 2000 in that state. The investigation Moncton is referring to is the Attorney General of Virginia's Climate Science Investigation, initiated by the Virginia Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli. It was a civil fraud investigation of five research grant applications by former University of Virginia professor Michael Mann. The reason Cuccinelli started this was because he thought that the ClimateGate email showed scientific fraud. To further investigate it, he issued a demand to the University of Virginia to turn over records related to Michael Mann and his grants. The judge dismissed this case on the 30th of August in 2010 as Cuccinelli didn't give any evidence that there might have been fraud involved. Furthermore, four of the five grants couldn't even be prosecuted on the 2003 Virginia Fraud Against Taxpayers Act as they preceded its enactment. Cuccinelli resubmitted his request, now with just the one grant being mentioned, but basically with the same wording. Now the problem is, as he's using the same wording again, is that there have been eight investigations into the ClimateGate emails. None of them have found any evidence for scientific fraud in the hacked emails. Moncton is technically correct in saying that there is a fraud investigation in the case of Michael Mann. However, this is the only one. And there is just one person involved. So his claim that the fabricators of the 2001 UN reports are now under criminal investigation for defrauding taxpayers by tampering data and results is not entirely correct. All of this was already known before the debate that Moncton held, so he had to be aware that the case as is wouldn't be a strong one. Considering this case was already dismissed in 2010 and the eight investigations already showed that the scientists did their work correctly. 
And as I expected, the last remaining case was ruled in favor of Michael Mann on the 12th of March in 2012 with the Virginia Supreme Court saying that Cuccinelli did not have a case and didn't have the authority under the Fraud Against Taxpayer Act to make civil investigation demands. Moncton did also mention something else he sees as fraud, a statistically fraudulent technique, but I'll talk about that when he mentions it in the debate. <laughs> 